Committee on Rules and Administration will come to order. Uh, today is Thursday, June 30th, 2022, and a quorum is present. Uh, welcome members and thank you for being available for today's meeting. The only item we have on the agenda is the report from the working group with recommendations for changes to the Senate's non-discrimination and anti-harassment policy. The Senate's current uh, anti-discrimination and anti-harassment policy was updated and adopted a few years ago. Since then, we had a specific complaint made by an employee where it was uh, realized that there was confusion in how our policy was interpreted and implemented. Senator Lopez Franzen and I had discussions with Secretary Ludeman uh, related to the complaint and requested that he retain an investigator to look into how the situation was handled with regard to our policy and the best interests of our employees and members. Secretary Ludeman retained an investigator who ultimately provided a report containing 18 recommendations to improve the policy and help make it more transparent and provide better direction in processing any complaints. Senator Lopez Franzen and I asked Senator Ludeman, Secretary Ludeman to form a working group made up of equal representation of members and staff from both caucuses to look at the recommendations provided by the investigator and incorporate them uh, as they saw value and update our Senate policy. Throughout the process, uh, the goal was to ensure a safe and respectful workplace for all at the Minnesota Senate. Uh, Senator Lopez Franzen uh, put forward a resolution uh, with deadlines uh, for the working group to come forward with their recommendations and for the rules committee to meet, uh, which brings us uh, to today. Uh, today's hearing and the recommendations before us are the result of the collaborative work by the working group. I would like to thank the members of the working group for their time and their commitment and their hard work to ensuring that the Senate is a welcoming, respectful and safe environment for all who come work and serve here at the Capitol. The working group members included Senators Kiffmeyer, Dietzik, Coleman, Kunish, Port, and Rude. Also included staff members Carly Moline and Rachel Aplikowski. And the working group was supported by Carlin Doyle Fontaine from Senate Council and Nicole Miner from our Human Resources Department. In preparation for today's hearing, you should all have received marked up versions of the policy as it has been reviewed and edited, including additional changes for technical and clarifying edits and a few uh, additional edits that were agreed to by our working group leads, Senators Kiffmeyer and Dietzik in consultation with Senate Council. The version being considered for adoption is date and time stamped on June 29th, 2022 at 5 o'clock p.m. I'd like to ask Senator Kiffmeyer and Senator Dietzik to walk us through their process of reaching these recommendations and how the changes will impact the Senate's policy moving forward. Senators Kiffmeyer and Dietzik, uh, welcome to the committee. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Senator Miller. Appreciate this opportunity. Uh, Senator Dietzik and I have worked closely together um, every step of the way, and I really appreciate her involvement and her attention to uh, the details that we have. I will start out and give um, uh, what we have gone through, but then I will um, defer to Senator Dietzik to also continue with any comments that she may have. Uh, we were given the task uh, to uh, do this work, uh, consider these recommendations, and then make a report to the Rules Committee. Our first meeting was March 4th of this year. Prior to that, Senator Dietzik and I had some conversations, informal mostly, and also with uh, Ms. Carlin Font uh, Fontaine as well. And so I really appreciate um, all of that kind of input and with the work group. We had several meetings of the full work group where we walked through every single 
section, every recommendation, every part of the policy, took input from every single member and gave due consideration, including, I believe it was uh, yesterday, the day before, 40 additional uh, recommendations came from through Senator Dietzik, and she and I met yesterday morning and with Carlin Doyle, and we went through all of those in detail and updated the current uh, document you have in front of you uh, as of 5 p.m. Uh, last night, 629. So really appreciate that very much. Uh, when, it, when this did pass out prior to these 40, uh, things were largely technical or some uh, reordering of language. Um, there was no opposition when we voted this out of the last uh, work group meeting, which they all understood uh, was uh, going to be going to the rules committee. And I would say that the um, recommendations you have in front of you, uh, there are 18 of them. Uh, you will note in the summary of recommendations and resulting changes, uh, you have a list there in front of you for the rules committee that uh, followed recommendation uh, was most frequently um, the result. Uh, sometimes though, we did some reordering. We would strike language and put it in a different place. We would add some Roman numerals, some letters, some other kinds of things that made it easier to read as far as the process was concerned. But in essence, we followed the recommendation and uh, accomplish those things. There were two things that we did not do, and one of them was had to do with the employee assistance, the EAP. In that particular case, uh, uh, Senator Dietzik and I had a lengthy discussion with that and with the work group that the EAP is a very, very important part of this policy. Uh, we kept the introduction, simplified it, we retained information about contacting the EAP, but we did some reordering of how it appeared uh, in response to the investigator's recommendation uh, that we wanted to be sure that we were in no way implying uh, one thing or another, but just, just to be sure to have things more clearly laid out. That's how we dealt with recommendation, one that was not just following the recommendation. Uh, the second one was um, recommended to remove the hearing. Uh, we retained the hearing process, but added the appeal process. So we retained the hearing, but added an appeal, a part of the due process. Both of them are have a little difference, uh, significant difference in how things are handled. Uh, just to mention the hearing uh, prior to this, since this, uh, the, the policy was in place prior with the hearing, that hearing process has not been used at all, never been used. But retaining it was there in case there was some sort of serious situation um, that we would retain that hearing even still in the policy, even though it has not been used over the past few years under the current policy. The other, um, one was in 14, remove the requirement for the Director of Human Resources to inform the accused of the name of the complainant. We, retired, we retained that requirement. Uh, it was an important part of that. And the, also the last one, number 18, <clears throat> uh, this had to do with um, how information can ethically be shared in investigations coordinated between Senate House, Executive Branch, political parties, and other employees. Uh, what we, how we addressed that was to say the working group suggests the Senate further consider this recommendation, but the reality is that there are limitations um, involving third parties. That's extremely complex. Uh, we did not um, do anything other than the suggestion that they further consider this. Uh, we felt that it was way, we don't have the membership, we don't have the people, it would take something much more uh, involved to do that. But the document you have in front of you today also includes an informal process because as we went through all the recommendations, it became quite clear that there were times where an informal process would be helpful. 
we added that and uh, added some other language in regards to that which is in the policy in front of you. You will note that uh, because there's a lot of strikeouts and then it appears to be new language, in some cases it is not striking, it's moving, right. structuring it differently, but the intent of the original policy is preserved. Key. And with that, I would ask uh, if you would have Senator Dietzik continue with her comments. Senator Dietzik, welcome to the committee. Thank you, members. Um, I want to thank you all for appointing a work group and for um, including me on it and letting us come and testify today. Um, we put in a lot of hours on this policy, and as um, Majority Leader Miller said, it was very collaborative. I want to um, thank Senator Kiffmeyer and the work group. Um, so, to Senator Kiffmeyer, we did literally go line by line on a lot of these documents um, and a lot of these changes and um, had some very thorough discussion. I also want to and would be remiss if I did not thank Ms. Doyle Fontaine because um, she had to put up with us. <laughs> um, and it was a lot of editing and you know discussions um, and we relied on her um, expertise and assistance um, a lot. And, and then Nicole Miller's as well, Nicole Miners as well. So we greatly appreciate that. Um, I think the I think we are being an elected body here in the Senate, I think we have some unique challenges. We are a unique group with unique circumstances. And so I think creating a policy that is fair and thorough um, has its own set of challenges, but I think we are we are getting there. And I think this policy, um, there are, you know, as um, Senator Kidmeyer said, I think there are some substantial changes, but there's just a lot of reorganization that makes it much more clear. Um, if you looked at the old policy, there were paragraphs and paragraphs, and um, that is just some, sometimes hard to read. And so we tried to make it simple and simplify it so that people can look at it and know what they're supposed to do, know what the roles and responsibilities are and what the duties are and how the process is supposed to work. So um, that was you know, a lot of time consuming, but appreciate everybody on the work groups, their diligence and commitment to getting this done. Um, I think that there, um, as Senator Kiffmeyer said, we did all agree to pass this out um, when we met last time because we knew that there was a deadline. Um, I think that we have, um, some of us have consistently expressed our um, concern about the requirement that the hearings, you know, the investigator suggested that the hearing procedure come out. And I think we, some of us have strongly disagreed with that. Um, and then felt it should come out, but it is in here. And so that that's just where we stand today. Um, but I think for the most part overall, I think we have all worked really, really good together and collaboratively to get this done. Um, I think that's pretty much it. And I think we'll just stand for any other questions that you have. And members, we do have uh, Ms. Doyle Fontaine from Senate Council, as well as uh, Nicole Miner, our Human Resources Director available to answer questions as well. We'll open it up for questions. Senator Lopez Franzen. Thank you, members. Thank you, Senator Miller and all the working group members, Senator Kickmeyer, Senator Dietzik, and everybody who worked on this. I, I know this is no small feat, and uh, I support where we move forward. We've done a lot of progress. Uh, our leadership team was briefed recently with the latest updates. And I do want to express that I, I still have some reservations on where we are landing, but I do want to say thank you to each and every one of you for making sure this is uh, the right step forward for our institution. Um, I am no longer going to be a Senate employee after December 31st, but I do want to make sure that anybody that stays has a safe and secure place to work. Um, whether it's a member or a page, everyone in between and everyone up and down the uh, our hierarchy, if you will, in the Minnesota Senate, but also in the state of Minnesota. So having said that, I, I do, uh, and I know I did, was the one pushing for this to get done because I think it's important um, in a swift manner, but I, at the same time, as an attorney myself, I also pay attention to those apostrophes and those um, periods and all those details and um, if you put a, a few attorneys in a room, we'll never necessarily going to all agree but uh, we do find compromise. Uh, when it comes to this particular set of recommendations, I, I guess I was not 100% clear how the working group was going to uh, do their work. And when I say that, 
um, I understand that there was no opportunity to see a full report, uh, not just of the investigation, but also a summary report. I know I've not been privy to the entire investigation report and, and Senator or Secretary Ludeman and I have had conversations about the sensitivity of that. I understand that. I've worked in HR and labor relations. I get how sensitive these matters are as well. Uh, but the working group has a, a duty and a calling to do what's best with the information they need to do that work. So I think there's some gaps of where we're landed because of some of that gap um, that not all of us have had privy to, to review, uh, whether it's a summary report or the full report. Um, I think uh, the pieces of, of um, that are in this package are, for the most part, uh, very well drafted and we've made a series of changes. Thank you, Senator Dietzik and, and Carolyn for continuing to work on that. Again, we can keep going if we had more time. And I do want to, for the committee and the rules committee to consider additional time and for the following, um, I believe that there is one piece that is a, a matter of, of contention and I don't want us to get it wrong. Um, and, and that's the hearing piece. And that was one that stuck with me when we first met after we had the consultant's report, that was something that um, has not been taken place in any other work setting that we know of, and that was a strong recommendation. And I just uh, believe that we should look into that one in more detail uh, to make sure we have it right. And when I say that is, uh, this process is it's not a legal process. This is an HR matter and investigation, and we shouldn't conflict um, an investigation with a full blown due process uh, case in a court setting. Um, they're very different and, and one is adversarial, the other one is to be fact finding. And I think we're kind of in the middle of those two. So I, I believe that we should look into it in additional detail. Um, I'm more comfortable with the majority of these pieces, but that one in particular, uh, without having uh, the background from the consultant to provide um, the members of the working group more context on, on why this needs to be um, removed and then to reinsert it into our, our policy. Um, I, I think it's, it's, it's concerning. I won't say it's problematic, but I would say it's concerning. Um, I don't feel um, in the rules committee that we've had the breadth of what the working group um, has had in terms of the work. So it's hard for us to just fix it now. Um, so I do recommend that we add more time to, to look into that and potentially um, get to a place where we all feel comfortable with it, um, going in or, or, or changing or whether the appeal process, that's completely new to me as well. Um, and we're the ones who have to implement this and as leaders of our caucuses and as, as leaders in our, in our staff. Um, so I wanna make sure that we get that one right, um, but it's not to diminish the work that has gone um, to date. So. Uh, I do have a resolution, but I also would love to discuss it with uh, with the committee if um, we would entertain some more time to look into that in particular. And that particular provision would be the number um, 12, the recommendation number 12 and, and page policy 22 and 23. And I can elaborate more, but um, Senator Miller, if you'd like, but I, I can also talk to, um, ask Carlin Fontaine from council or Senator Bo or. Tom Bodder and from council to elaborate what that looks like. Uh, members, any questions? Uh, Senator Marty. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I First of all, I think it would be helpful to hear from Senator Port. I saw we received a letter from her and Senator Kunish about some concerns about this. And I, I very much feel that while there's great progress has been made, that it's important to get it right. And as part of that, uh, their letter mentioned having access to the investigator and to seeing the report. And I like what was just said by Senator Lopez France, and I understand the sensitivity to this. I don't, as a member of the Rules Committee, I don't feel a desire or any interest in seeing the report. I do think that the people who are writing the new policy should be having full access to it. And, and again, the one particular one that um, their letter pointed out um, that I have concerns about, when we look at what the, that recommendation number 12, which was consider eliminating the right to a hearing and instead providing administrative appeal as an added layer of due process. The reasoning that was given 
in the recommendation of the numerous discrimination harassment policies the investigators worked with, this is the only one, and I'm told she's worked on hundreds of these things, this is the only one that gives parties a right to a hearing in lieu of an investigation. And she states that the prospect of a formal hearing would be intimidating and present a significant barrier to those who may otherwise report workplace concerns. Hearings are also timely, costly and time consuming and an adversarial process tending to create more pain than healing. Investigation can achieve better, can achieve the same degree of impartial fact finding and appropriate resolution. And then their final comment, which is why I think it's important for these members to have what Senator Port was asking for in the letter. Um, in, in this case, it says, it would have been, made little sense to hold a hearing and that added to the confusion over whether the policy even applied. And to me, this is the one recommendations I see that is just simply being pushed off to the side. And to me, it's a very substantial one. And I understand the importance of due process, but as Senator Lopez Franzen pointed out, this is an HR process, not the courts. And people still, if, if somebody is falsely accused or inappropriately treated by the process or something, they still retain the opportunity to go to court, um, whether about defamation or whatever. So I think that's appropriate. But when the reviewer, the, in, the investigator is saying that these hearing process can be intimidating and present a significant barrier, I think that alone says we should go back. So I, I would support Senator Lopez Franson's push to give them another month to work this out, but also ask them explicitly to look into this one and talk with the investigator about it and find out why. And then we should hear as a Senate Rules Committee why they feel so strongly if they do that that's inappropriate. We should go against what the investigator pointed out and go against what every other discrimination harassment policy she's worked with goes to say to create this different process. And so I, I'm very much troubled by this, but I guess I'd start by asking if we could have Senator Port, I see she's in the meeting, I ask if she could speak to us about the things in the letter and her concerns. Yep, and we'll absolutely go to Senator Port. First, I wanna to go to members of the Rules Committee. I see Senator Frentz's hand is up, uh, Senator Frentz. Thank you, Mr. Chair, thank you, members. First of all, I apologize for leaving my microphone on. Second, I wanna just say, the most important thing that we're pursuing here is to get the policy right. And so I would support additional time if we are correct that the members of the working group feel additional time is a good idea. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Okay, uh, Senator Port, would you like to uh, respond to Senator Marty's question? Sure, thank you, Mr. Chair and members. Um, appreciate you taking time to talk through this today. It's an important policy. It's important that we get it right. Um, I wanna echo what uh, Senator Kiffmeyer and Senator Dietzik have said that I, I do think that the work group has worked really well together and have sort of very diligently um, and seriously focused on our goal of making sure that this policy protects employees and members in the Minnesota Senate. Um, you all have uh, received a copy of the letter that Senator Kunish and I shared. She's not able to join us today. Um, but we wanted to just make sure that these pieces were brought in front of the Rules Committee, that, that there is concern about some of the um, recommendations that we did not adopt, especially the hearing process, I think is, is the one that is the biggest. And um, additionally, I, I think the one thing I want to raise is, you know, we got this list of recommendations from the investigator and the reasoning for them. But we don't, we haven't had a conversation with the investigator. We haven't seen the report that she released, which, uh, or that she created, um, which would tell us if the changes that we made to the policy, you know, fit what her concerns with making the recommendations were. Did we understand correctly what she meant by the changes we need to make? Did we implement them in the correct way that would make our policy stronger? And I want to advocate really strongly that we have the opportunity to discuss these with her to make sure that we are understanding the reasonings behind um, her points and that we correctly implement them in a way that makes our policy the strongest that it can be to protect our staff, our employees, and members. 
Um, I'm happy to answer any questions if folks have them, but um, I appreciate you all taking time and hope you all read the letter um, and happy to, to be helpful in any other way. And I don't know about the rest of the committee. I received the letter this morning. Um, uh, just so folks know if they haven't had an opportunity to read it, it should be in your email. I think it came right around 9 a.m. this morning. Uh, Senator Rest, your hand is up. Oh, thank you, um, uh, Mr. Chairman. I I also just want to express my um, uh, real appreciation for the work that the work group uh, has done on both sides of the aisle. They have made it collaborative. Um, they have taken um, partisanship totally out of the discussion. And I, I have so much respect for Senator Kiff Meyer, um, who on one occasion recently took one of my suggestions. So thank you very much, Senator Kiff Meyer. And, um, and, and certainly Senator uh, Dietzik, Senator um, Port, um, who is with us today and, and, and all the others. Um, I think to respect their work, um, we have to recognize that um, it's just not finished and that there are still um, questions, not just about wordsmithing, but questions about real policy that um, I, for one, want the, um, want the work group to continue um, working on. And um, uh, it's not a dalliance. It really is um, important um, uh, considerations, discussions that need to go on. And whether they include um, members um, occasionally on an individual basis or otherwise, um, other members of, um, of the Senate uh, to have a discussion with the work group, um, I think that um, we will all benefit from that, and, and in especially um, our employees. I think that that is um, our focus here. Uh, we, want, we want good morale, and good morale comes from our employees being able to um, trust the processes that we set up um, that um, uh, that um, that will benefit them in having a safe and secure um, workplace. And in addition, that's also true for us as members. There are protections for members, um, whether they are accusers, by the way, or whether they are, which is a different process, I understand that, we do have that in our ethics committee, but um, we have that outlet, um, but also with regard to our relations, our own relationships and individual relationships with, um, with one another and, um, and with, um, with our employees. So I, I do support giving the committee uh, or the work group um, more time, particularly looking at the um, hearing process. I, I um, respect the recommendation of the investigator, but I would certainly like for them to have more of an opportunity, the work group, more of an opportunity to, um, to speak with her and why a hearing process, which um, has already been admitted is adversarial, um, is, the, um, is the preferred way uh, rather than the alternatives that some of the members of the work group have, um, um, have brought up. So um, uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, for uh, letting me speak at length here. I appreciate that. Um, and um, again, I want to express my appreciation um, uh, to both you and Senator Lopez Franzen for being open to comments from members and the work group. And, um, and to Ms. Fontaine and for everyone that has been speaking with the work group um, about um, organizing the policy and making it clear and straightforward. Um, 
I'm, um, I'm, I'm very, very grateful. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator Rest. Uh, Senator Newman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, members. Um, if I, if I'm, I think I'm correct on this, that the working group has been working on this now for about four months. But very recently, uh, it, the uh, recommendation or the, the proposed policy that's before us today, I believe passed out of the working group un, uh, unanimously. I, I'd have to defer to the folks on the working group on that, but I know that it passed out and it's in front of us because it's now being recommended to us. Uh, and I, I just as a, uh, a, a possible uh, way to resolve this would be to uh, acknowledge the, the good work that the working group has put together so far, adopt the work that they have proposed. And that doesn't mean that the working group has to stop. They could continue on working uh, with uh, making it better if they felt necessary in the future. But as of right now, uh, when I read through the uh, proposal, it looked to me like they had really um, sharpened up, given the policy a lot of clarity. And uh, uh, I see would see nothing wrong with adopting what we have now. It would be a great improvement to what uh, uh, the, the current policy that's in, and then have the working group uh, continue to refine uh, the policy as necessary. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator Newman. And Senator Newman, your comments uh, were very much in line with what I'm about to uh, recommend. Um, because of all the time and effort that the working group put into this and because the, the updated policy in front of us that has been brought forward by the working group is a significant improvement and provides clarity and makes uh, the Minnesota Senate uh, an even um, more safe work environment for members and staff and everyone else uh, who, who is at the Senate, I would recommend that we move forward with adopting the policy uh, today. And then we encourage the working group to continue to work through um, any remaining uh, differences that might be out there, including that hearing process. It sounds like there's uh, uh, maybe that's one of the the most uh, uh, the, the largest areas of concern for some of the members. So I would recommend that we uh, that we adopt the updated policy today and then encourage the working group to uh, continue to work to see if they can find consensus. Senator Marty. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I have some concern about that because I think that that in effect is rubber stamping this, as I've heard Senator Newman and others say, this is unanimously supported by the work group. And the work group, again, I'm, I'm still, I haven't figured out the logic of this, but none of them have seen the report. I don't want, I'm, and I'm told the reason is, is because it's very sensitive. It talks about personalities and people who don't even work for the Senate anymore. And I understand that. And I understand the importance of secrecy in that. But I don't see why you can have people who are making recommendations based on a report without seeing the report. And this one particular one, which was a strong recommendation, she says the consultant, I don't know her name, but she says she's done many, many of these reviews of various anti-harassment, anti-discrimination policies, and has never had one in any of the, I don't know if it's hundreds that she's dealt with that's ever had a hearing process. And she explains that it can be intimidating and can be a barrier to people and costly and everything else. And my understanding from talking to some of the members of the work group was that it was taken out and then at a later meeting, it was just added in, no votes or anything, just added in because some people had concerns about it. And to me, I think we as a rules committee at least deserve to hear a strong statement from the work group saying, we want to keep this hearing in there because we think we should go against the recommendations of the reviewer. We should go against her recommendations. We should be the only place that has that hearing process. 
because someone at the Senate thinks we ought to do that against your recommendations. And to me, if I hear from the six members of the work group that that's what they think is appropriate, I'm willing to adopt that. But I haven't heard that from the six members of the group, and I've seen a letter from a couple of them saying they strongly dissent from that. And so to me, saying, well, we're going to deal with a lot of these smaller things, and I agree. I've read it over and made a few other suggested edits, and they've been good about incorporating those in. But those are smaller issues, and I want to have a good policy. But when this came up last time, uh, two years when this incident arose last year, um, we were told the Senate revised its policy and both parties agreed to it and everybody was fine with it. Now we're saying maybe it wasn't as good as we thought. I don't want to have us redo that again. In two years from now, we have another unfortunate incident. Somebody says, well, the policy didn't work and well, everybody agreed to it. So to me, I want to hear from six members of the work group saying, we feel it's important to go against the recommendations of this, we've talked to the to the report writer. We've reviewed the report confidentially, and we'll keep it confidential. We've done that, and we feel it's important that the Senate go against the recommendations of the work group. And that, to me, is important before we adopt anything. And I'll oppose doing that, and I'll strongly support Senator Lopez Francis saying, "I don't want this to be a partisan thing or dispute." And I appreciate that it's not being handled that way; that it's a bipartisan three and three members. But they're not done. I mean, when we were looking at, I looked yesterday, I didn't see the draft report till Tuesday, I guess. And um, the, some of the areas which they made more progress on in the last two days, but um, on the consensual relations and others, I think there's still more work to be done there and saying, well, we'll, we'll pass this. It's not ready for prime time, but we'll pass it now. And they can keep working on it. Well, that takes away a lot of their authority. If they want, they can keep working on it. I want the people who are responsible in charge with working on this to see the resources they need in order to make the right decisions. Senator Franzen, Lopez Franzen. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And I agree with you. I want to move forward with all the great progress we've made. Um, and again, we could keep going and finding and nitpicking because a policy it doesn't tackle every single factual event uh, or any particular instance. I mean, the policy is there to hopefully cover a breadth of incidents that might happen in the workplace. So um, we can keep going and going. So I, I'm hesitant to to just leave it open ended because uh, what we're trying to just fix is one particular or not fix. We're trying to co come to an agreement of how to move forward in the particular area of section, the recommendation number 12. So um, I, I don't have to reiterate everything that has already been said. Um, I would move to amend um, the, the policy as it stands, the recommendations to delete section L at this point to remove the hearing and hearing process um, and then pass what we have left. Um, that would be my motion right now. Um, and the alternative, um, extend the deadline to work on it um, or concurrently. I don't know which one goes first because I have two different uh, ways to go about it. But um, I think this is something we all, all of us in this Zoom meeting hearing should understand how it's going to work, how it's changed, why it's changed, why it's necessary. And we want to come in you know, with confidence that this is the right approach for our workforce and workplace. Um, and I know that I'm the one putting pushing the, the deadlines to begin with so we can get things done. And I really am very appreciative of all the hard work that has been done, in particular by Senator Kiffmeyer Dietzik and, and Carolyn. And I know others have also um, worked hard on this, uh, but I know they've worked really hard in the last few hours of the day. So thank you for that. Um, so, Mr. Chair, uh, I would move that. Um, and I hope that we can just postpone and, and have time to 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 get to a place where we all feel comfortable what that looks like versus just I mean if I ask each and every one of you what it does and how it does it I don't think we can answer that question and that's problematic because it's a very um, consequential part of of our process of bringing forth a wrong or a, or alleged wrong in our workplace so I don't think we have the luxury of getting it wrong and at the very um, least, we should at least feel that we've gotten to a better place than we are today. 
on that particular section. So with that, um, I move the A1 amendment um, or in the alternative, Mr. Chair, if you prefer, I'd rather just maybe just make it the extension for that area. So we all feel comfortable of, of where we're landing. That's, that's I think a reasonable request that you're hearing from all of us or from a lot of us. Uh, so Senator Franzen, which motion do you have on the table? The which A1. one are you offering? The A1. The A1, okay. So we can move forward with everything else that's been done, like you said, um, those are the things that are not as controversial that we can still tweak and we can still work on it as was mentioned as a working group can continue to work on things to improve. But this piece is not ready for prime time. The A1 would make sure that we remove it. So Mr. Bodden or Ms. Doyle Fontaine, if, if this motion were to be adopted with the current hearing process that's in our current policy remain or would it just be silent on that? Mr. Mr. Chairman, the, the A1 amendment would remove the hearing process entirely, and it contains language that would delete, uh, you know, basically conforming language elsewhere in the policy. So it's a removal of the hearing process entirely, the hearing process that's provided for employees. Okay, so that changes our current policy to remove the hearing process. Well, what this would do, yeah, to be clear about that is it's amending the document that's been provided from the working group. You would need to then adopt the document in order to have that take effect the way this is structured. Correct. But our current policy, if if we don't if we don't adopt anything today, our current policy stays in place and that does include a hearing process. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. All right, members, uh, questions uh, or comments on the Lopez Franzen motion? Uh, Senator Rest? Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I want to be clear that we actually have a motion in front of us to amend. I don't know whether the A1 actually says adopt the working, um, working um, the, the work groups. Um, report, um, um, but amended to exclude the hearing process. Um, I think we need a broader motion on the floor to then offer amendments to, um, and that might not be the, um, the only one, but I, I, do, I do, and I, I will um, support removing it at this point. Um, and not just say to the working group, well, if you want to talk more, that's okay, but but we've already decided stuff. I don't, I think that there should be some sort of um, acknowledgement that um, the report is not um, complete and that um, uh, their good work uh, needs to be honored. And that is not just making it, um, accepting it today. Keeping in mind that those that say, well, it was unanimously recommended to bring forward to the rules committee. Well, that's because there was a deadline uh, and they were responding to um, to the deadline. And as Senator Dietzig has pointed out, there were any number of occasions which they've already spoken to where they dissent, uh, members of the working group dissent from uh, what was in what is in front of us today, and certainly the members of the rules committee can make other amend, amendments um, and encourage the members of the work group, uh, or not only encourage them, direct them, direct them. Their work is not done. Direct them to continue working, and the the notion that this is um, something that well they've been working on it for four months. Well. Um, uh, another month of looking at particularly um, having access to the investigator um, to query her on how, um, uh, wh why her recommendation on the hearing process was as, as, uh, as she presented it. I, I really think that um, th that is an important step that needs to be ta taken and the information provided to um, the work group. And as Senator Marty said, I don't need, I don't need to be in on that um, discussion, um, but the, the work group has worked extremely well. 
um, uh, um, uh, recognizing and honoring uh, confidentiality. As Senator Marty said, we um, I certainly hadn't seen anything or had any any um, real conversations about uh, what's in the uh, report until um, until Tuesday. So um, this is new to members of the of the Rules Committee, and it, I believe in extending the um, the working groups mandate or mission or whatever you want to call it officially not just saying well if you all want to continue talking fine but we've already adopted a policy i think that would be a grave mistake on the part of the rules committee and um, and not honor the work that that um that they have um that they have already done so um if we do have a general motion to which the friends and um, Lopez Franzen amendment would be offered, um, I will be um, um, supporting um, that amendment. And then during this next month, uh, yeah. uh, it would be possible for um, the, um, the work group to more thoroughly examine and explore whether um, a hearing process is um, needed, whether it's warranted, whether it is a sine qua non, if we don't have it, we don't have a process. I mean, I, I really would like a very strong statement coming back, um, coming back um, from them. And um, uh, so I, I hope that we can set the hearing process aside, direct them to expend it, to um, deal with it further, and um, and that direct them, not just say, well, if you want to. I um, am very, um, I'm very, um, um, I feel very strongly about that. And once again, I want to um, thank everyone who's had a, a role in this. Um, and um, I thank uh, Senator Newman for his suggestions. He's not a member of the work group, but just as those of us that um, have talked with members of the work group um, since Tuesday um, have expressed our opinions and su some suggestions, I certainly welcome his. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Bonner. Mr. Mr. Chairman, just a procedural clarification. I just want to make sure the documents that staff have provided make sense to members of the committee. The A1 amendment is drafted as an amendment to the document that is timestamped 5 p.m. on June 29th, which is a collection of proposals. So the staff, certainly what staff were attempting to accomplish was preparing this in amendment form to a proposal. Uh, the amendment would not take effect unless the underlying document is adopted, um, was certainly what, what staff were attempting to accomplish. Just to clarify that the vote on this particular amendment wouldn't immediately change Senate policy until the underlying document has been dealt with. That's all I wanted to clear up. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Bowden. Uh, Senator Newman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And and with uh, uh, Mr. Bodern's procedural advice in, in place, uh, members, I would indicate that I would oppose the adoption of the A1 amendment. Um, the, the allegations of uh, misconduct in violation of the proposed policy, I would consider uh, to be, you know, very, very serious uh, allegations. Uh, and and frankly, uh, so serious that under the right circumstances, uh, an allegation of that type could literally be a career ending allegation. So I think that what the working group has done is uh, a, a very good job of trying to balance the right of privacy versus the right of due process. And to have a policy in place, and and frankly, I I really don't put any credence in uh, the fact that you know maybe other uh, employment situations don't have a right of hearing in place. That I don't know, but I do know that the Senate is a is a pretty unique employment situation, and um, uh, with with our staff and with our elected members. And we being so much in the public eye, 
there simply has to be some form of due process when an allegation of misconduct of this type is brought forward. And I, th I really think that, uh, yeah, it can be intimidating to make those kinds of, in, of uh, allegations and maybe intimidating in front of, uh, to go in front of a hearing, but it would be a hearing that, at least in my world, is completely different than say a court process. Um, but even though it may be intimidating to, to have, to go in front of a hearing, that accused person, be, a man, be it a man or a woman, they still have got to have the right to be able to defend themselves. And without that hearing process, there is no such right. So consequently, for those reasons, Mr. Chairman and members, I would oppose the A1 amendment. Uh, Senator Port. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, just a few things I wanna wanna raise um, that uh, first in, in response to Senator Newman's points on, on this particular amendment, um, we thought very carefully about this and talked about it a lot um, and do believe that the investigation process, which would go through and find the details and talk to witnesses and things like that, um, as well as the appeal process that we added would give that um, due process uh, sort of ideal um, the weight that it get, that it should have, um, but it also protects our employees, which the hearing process would only apply to employees. It does not apply to a members. Never has um, that that um, process can be intimidating both for someone to have to take on, but also financially because you are required uh, to get your own private attorney, um, should you want one. So to have to put on to a person who is raising a complaint that they would have to then pay for a private attorney simply to have HR, their HR take their, their complaint seriously is a deterrent for people reporting, which is something we very seriously, you know, cannot accept. Um, I, I do want to mention to other things that were brought up before that we have requested this report and access to the investigator from the beginning of this process as the work group. Um, we did dissent throughout the hearing process to various pieces of this being um, moved forward. And since the work group voted to move that forward because of our deadline, 42 changes have been made um, to this policy that the entire work group has not um, had a chance to see or has not had a chance to discuss. And we've just seen, I just got all of the, the various amendments this morning, like all of you did. Um, so I do think that there is serious reasons for our work group to have a discussion, to continue our work. But I will also say um, that it was very important for us to have a deadline. Yes, we have had this task ahead of, in front of us for four months, but for the first several months, we met maybe once a month. Um, it is only in the last month or so that we have met more frequently and really moved forward a bulk of the work. So if you do, um, as the Rules Committee, you know, put us back to work to finish this policy, I would encourage you to put a deadline on that and make sure that we are moving forward with that because it is important for our staff and important for all employees of the Senate that we move forward with this expediently. Senator Kiffmeyer. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair and members. So um, I appreciate the fact that there were 40 But it doesn't really mean for comma or add something else. So they were highly, highly technical, which actually um, usually at the end of a vote like this, we would just have staff go through and make those anyway. But for the sake of um, because we were looking at them anyway, I want to give every opportunity for member input. We went ahead and worked through those with Miss uh, Doyle Fontaine. Uh, yesterday, but they were highly technical. And yes, from the beginning, the hearing was an issue of dissent. But for all other items, I cannot think of another one 
that was like that. The other ones were all based on a consensus, suggestions of language and a bipartisan basis, bringing things up, talking them through, having draft language, redrafting, moving, a very iterative kind of process. And Senator Porton Kunesh and Senator Disick, I know, have communicated among themselves, as I have as well. And so their involvement in regards to those 40 things were clearly something that Senator Dietzik, I know, was working with people like Senator Ress and others as well. But it was it was very uh, consensus driven. And the only one and was their dissent and their concerns about the hearing was duly noted. And yet we um, voted it out of the work group to be coming before uh, the Rules Committee today. Um, I think that uh, since they were technical, clarifying, um, uh, beneficial, just like we did other things, I think we have complied with uh, the work group and bringing good work before you today. And yes, duly noted that that section on the hearing was um, not a consensus, was, was a concern and a question fully acknowledged. Uh, Senator Dietzek. Um, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yep, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I appreciate the ability to join you all today. And I would, I would, I would say that the um, changes that we made yesterday, there were a lot of technical changes, a lot of typos, um, but they're also, I would call them more clarifying than technical because it was um, literally tightening that language and or moving the language or making sure that, you know, if something is in writing, what does that mean? Is it is a text or a email? okay and sufficient. And so there was a lot of um, additional language like that that is probably more clarifying. Um, I do have a question regarding this hearing procedure and I don't know if it is appropriate to ask. It might be good to ask um, if possible if any of the attorneys on this Zoom have any input or thoughts and then if our Senate resources or Ms. Doyle Fontaine has a response. So if we're requiring somebody um, or there is this option for somebody to request a hearing and it is either side, you know, either the person making the complaint or the person accused can make that hearing, request that hearing process. So it is fair that way. But I think it does have a chilling effect because if you have to go in, you know, going in and having to report to your supervisor or going to talk to HR when, um, you know, you have been harassed is, it's like going to the principal's office. It is something that you don't take lightly. Now, there might be false accusations out there. there I'm not denying that at all, but it is very, it is very serious. Um, and it is a very monumental decision when you make that decision to go and report something. It, it takes a lot of courage. I just wanna get that, put that out there. And so to then be told, well, you're going to have to, the person has required, requested a hearing, and so you're going to have to hire an attorney to ensure that your workplace, I have to hire an attorney to ensure that the place I'm working is safe and from harassment and discrimination, I think would have a chilling impact. My question is, could that be considered retaliation? I mean, the hearing process is open to everybody, so maybe not, but could that be considered retaliation? Could it be somebody who is an attorney and, you know, is very much more familiar with the process and say, you know what, I want to do, I want to, I want to have this hearing. I'm an attorney, I don't need to hire an attorney, but this young staff person might feel they need to hire an attorney to be on a fair and balanced level playing field. Would they consider that, or would somebody else consider that to be retaliation? Because there is a procedure that we added, which I think made me a little more comfortable with this hearing process that says a person can, in writing, withdraw the complaint. So, and then if that complaint is withdrawn, Senate Human Resources can still investigate the complaint because it is still in our overall purview and our overall goal to have a workplace that is free from harassment and discrimination. So I don't really know if it is helpful to have a staff person say, I feel threatened by having to go to a hearing. It is an intimidating. I don't have the money to hire an attorney. And could they then you know, consider that to be retaliation? Because I don't know if everybody is gonna use the hearing process. I don't know if anybody will use the hearing process, but it could be you know, a very powerful attorney decides, you know what, I'm not gonna stand for this. I understand they are concerned that this is their 
this is their livelihood, but there's also everything in this document is we continually say that confidentiality will be, you know, kept to the greatest extent possible. And I would encourage us all to understand that it should be kept confidential. And so, you know, the hearing process is not going to be publicly aired. And so I think that it, it is, to me, it is chilling. And I just would ask, does anybody know or would it, could it be considered retaliation? I don't have an answer. Um, anyone, let's see, Senator Lopez, friends, and I think you, your hand was up for to go next. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. Senator Kiffmeyer, did you want to talk on this? I do, but I will wait until um, others have spoken. Senator Newman on this question. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I was just going to try and answer Senator Dietzik's uh, question, uh, at least from my standpoint. Uh, first of all, there is no requirement that anybody has to hire an attorney. In point of fact, uh, in uh, most uh, hearings under Chapter 14 under the Office of Administrative Hearings, there's many, many, many people come in without an attorney. Uh, you know, it may be advisable, but it is not required uh, by either party under the under the proposed party or policy. Um, and I will answer your second question. Could this be considered retaliation? Uh, in my view, uh, the answer would, would be no, but I would also answer it with the corresponding question. Uh, could an allegation of misconduct under this policy without the right of a hearing be considered some sort of retaliation? So my point is, Senator Diesick, um, your question, I think, cuts two ways and can be applied uh, in a couple of different manners. And having the, uh, the uh, hearing process in place is a protective measure, not a threatening or retaliation type of a measure, uh, at least in my opinion. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Senator Kiffmeyer. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I just want to clarify a few things here. And especially from my position, uh, what I would prefer is we, we would adopt the entire report, including the hearing, because we currently have the hearing process. Uh, this would just keep the current situation. It has not been used before, but it is there as a, a valuable just in case process issue that is, uh, is, that is important uh, to many of us, myself included. And I think that's a really important consideration. Uh, but the committee then, the work group, I'm sorry, could be charged uh, specifically to look at the hearing area uh, and possibly do that. But I, I am concerned about the fact that once a full report, which has names and people in a not a positive way, that once that gets outside of the very tight uh, people involved right now, Remembering there are names of people, there are names of a variety of people that it, this would violate their privacy right now. And so that was the reason why the full report was not shared to begin with. The other thing is that I wanted recommendations to be uh, dealt with as they stand. Let's take a look at these recommendations without having possibly a bias created by looking at a full report. Because I think sometimes when you have a specific instance and issues that were there, that's what the recommendations were for. Uh, the person who did look at all of them and said, okay, and they were recommendations, not a requirement, not something we had to do. And we considered them all uh, very, very carefully. But I think I just thought it was really important to let you know that, uh, that I would really prefer if we adopt the entire report and then uh, the work group could continue working on the hearing and see if we can come to some consensus. I'm not sure that we will, because there are some here on the work group who feel strongly against it and some who feel strongly for it. I'm not sure that this can be a consensus and it's in the current policy and adopting this today, we just continue that forward. Thank you, Mr. Chair. All right, we're gonna to go to Senator Dietzik and then uh, we'll go to Senator Lopez Franzen for uh, final comments on her amendment and then we'll take the vote. Uh, Senator Dietzik. 
Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. And um, thank you, Senator Newman, for your, your thoughtful comments. Um, I'm just going to comment back on them. So I think that um, because you're an attorney, so you understand administrative rules and procedures and that you might not need an attorney, but most people won't know that. And if they are up against an attorney or somebody who has an attorney, they're going to feel they need an attorney. Um, and we can't control that, um, you know, the hearing, how people will feel in this hearing process. I, I just believe it will, we can't control how intimidated, intimidated somebody will feel. And so that is beyond our control. And so that's why if we're trying to have an open process to let people and encourage them to report harassment so that we can, you know, have this work group, workplace that people want to come work here, I think we want to have a fair process. And then um, regarding the allegation could be retaliation. And that is potentially true, but that's why we have an investigation process in place. And then that's why we put for due process, we put in the appeals process because it is um, less confrontational, um, but you can still get to the, get to a fair and balanced review and a person can defend themselves. And so um, I think the investigation and then the appeals process is a more, is, is a more fair and balanced um, way to move forward. So um, thank you again. All right, Senator Lopez friends into your uh, amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And um, I will request a roll call. That's how strongly I feel about us working on this together and not making this a um, an issue that we can't find common ground. I think we can, um, but we don't have all the tools together. And that meaning um, we don't have the consultant who gave that recommendation and the, the perspective, not the report, but her perspective of how this um, worked out in the incident that we've had, that had in the past and moving forward. Um, there is a reason that that um, piece was uh, recommended to be stricken from the current policy. I wanna mention on page 25 of the Minnesota Senate non-discrimination anti-harassment policy and process drafted revised 5 p.m. on 6-29-2022, Section nine talks about false complaints, Senator Newman. Complaints of discrimination or harassment that are knownly, knownly false or that are made in reckless disregard of whether they are false will not be tolerated. Any person making a complaint of this nature is subject to disciplinary action consistent with this policy. So that addresses um, false complaints. Um, again, I want to reiterate HR investigations are private. They must be private and they are in every workplace setting. This is no different and we should never change that. Um, for many reasons, and, and, and our HR person is, I think she's still here, um, Nicole Miner can probably elaborate. Um, the only issue we have is to continue to work on this section. So I think the rest of it, we can move forward and my amendment would just remove this. We can pass the rest of it and then make another motion to keep working on the hearing process to make sure we have it right whether it's an appeal process, um, whatever that means, uh, or whatever that would uh, end up being. Um, Mr. Uh, Senator Newman mentioned the right to defend themselves. Um, you know, again, an HR matter is not a place where you're defending yourselves. It's when someone brings a complaint. We have OSHA requirements making and, 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 and placards in every workplace where you call if you feel like you're being harassed or intimidated, discriminated against. That is the law of the land. That is what we have to do as a workplace. So I think we're coming at it, 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 it with our own uh, work um, setting. I mean, we, we're we in a different bucket, politicians, elected officials, but that does not mean that we're gonna be holding ourselves above the law of making sure that people that are working in our um, supervision, in our buildings, don't have the right to bring a claim of uh, harassment uh, or discrimination of any kind. And the job is for the HR professionals to investigate because not every lawyer here understands HR law and it's very complex. Um, so we must make sure that we understand that this is an area that we should rely on, on HR um, department and maybe make it more robust to have an HR lawyer there to help us walk through this because these are um, very sensitive um, issues. And then um, we, there was mention of the more informal way to manage these allegations of wrongdoing because it could be a mistake. It could be a misinterpretation. It could be a trigger for someone um, that you have no idea of why that person is being triggered and brings 
their concern to HR and HR can manage that. That is what they are trained to do. Um, I think strongly that we should pause on this piece and make sure we get it right. It doesn't mean it's not gonna end up being where it is now, but we don't have um, the robust understanding for the members of the working group to feel comfortable with the language that was brought ahead. So Mr. Chair, I, I move forward with um, uh, a roll call to remove this piece and hopefully to adopt the rest of the uh, of the, the recommendations that are on this document and, and to hopefully bring a consultant back to talk to the working group and, and get this one right. So with that, Mr. Chair, uh, I move my motion. Mr. Chairman. Senator Marty. Mr. Chairman, I don't want to delay, but I also don't want us to rush this through. I, I think there were a lot of things that were said. Senator Tiffmeyer was surprised to hear you say that that you're concerned that the task force members would be biased by the seeing the whole report. I'm not sure what the bias of the report is, but that's what we were, that was the reason we pulled together the task for the work group to try and address this. And the idea, you know, there are certain members of the Senate who have seen the report. I assume Secretary Ludeman, Ms. Doyle Fontaine, I, I think some others have as well. And we let them see it because we trust them. And I frankly trust the members of this work group too. It's only six people. I trust them to look at it. And frankly, the idea that, well, we can get this done and we can deal with the other one later. Well, we've kind of undercut the work group saying, well, you guys are done. You can keep meeting if you want to, but we're not gonna give you access to the consultant. We're not gonna give anything else. And again, I, I just wanna restate what the consultant said about this one. The only thing I've seen from the consultant other than the actual words of the recommendation were of numerous discrimination and harassment policies investigators worked with. This is the only one that gives parties the right to a hearing in lieu of an investigation. And Senator Newman, I realize the Senate is a different place than other employers, but I don't know any employer where these aren't serious, serious matters and should be treated that way. And then she continues, the prospect of a formal hearing would be intimidating and present a significant barrier to those who may otherwise report workplace concerns. She's trying to address the fact that, as Senator Dietzik pointed out, there already are significant intimidating barriers for people bringing forward concerns. She talks about the hearings are also timely and costly and time consuming in an adversarial process tending to create more pain than healing. That's against what we wanna do. That's why all these other employers don't go with a hearing process. She says investigations can achieve better, can ach better achieve the same degree of impartial fact finding and appropriate resolution. And then she makes her final case that in this situation, in this case, it would have made little sense to hold a hearing and that added to confusion of where the policy even applied. To me, we are being told we were told, oh, this is unanimously supported by the work group. Well, not by everyone. Well, we didn't have a vote on it. Well, because I was told they took it out. They were not going to have a hearing anymore. And then at the next meeting, it was back in again with no votes or anything else. So to me, before the rules committee would keep this into the process and move ahead with these recommendations, I think the least we need is to have the six members of the committee say, why they think those who believe we should, since there was no vote, they should have to say why they think we're not gonna follow the report of this. And if not, we as a rules committee should be sending it back and saying, we'd like to know more information why that one recommendation of the, of the person that the Senate hired, the nonpartisan person the Senate hired, why her recommendations on this aren't good. So I just think this has to be fully before us that this is going against the recommendations of the person. Well, for many of the reasons that Senator Marty just mentioned, I do not feel comfortable um, adopting the recommendation, the recommendations from the working group unless it's in their entirety. So therefore, I would oppose uh, the A1 amendment. I believe that we should adopt the recommendations as they came forward in their entirety uh, by the working group. Um, I also do think it's a good idea to uh, not only uh, let the working group continue to work if they wish, but I, uh, I will, I think it's a good idea for us to uh, adopt the recommendations in their entirety and then have the working group continue to work for another 30 days to see 
um, if they can find consensus on the hearing process. But since it's already part of our process and it has um, and it came forward as a recommendation from the working group, uh, the motion in front of us, the A1, I would oppose. Mr. Chairman. A roll call has been uh, asked for. We'll take the roll, Senator. Mr. Martin, Chairman, take the roll. Yes, uh, before we take the roll, I don't know if it's a higher motion because this is unusual procedure because we're dealing with an amendment to a draft of a report that's not before us. But Senator Lopez Franson proposed earlier that we send it back to them, have them take another look and finish it. And to me, saying, well, we should adopt their full report when it kind of was not really a full report. It was kind of a, we have to get this done now. And people saying we dissent on this and it's being sold to us as if this is unanimously agreed to. I would move that we take up the other Lopez Franson amendment first, send it back to there. Again, I don't know if it's higher motion because I don't know which is further away from passing. So I'll, I'll defer well, Senator, to Senator. Senator Marty, I would not support the other motion. I would support adopting the recommendations in their entirety today, which is an improvement over our current Senate policy. There's been a lot of time and effort that's been put into this. So I would recommend that we adopt the recommendations in their entirety, but clearly there's more discussion that uh, can happen and if there's an opportunity to improve it even more, I feel comfortable having the working group continue to work over the course of the next 30 days. And if they come forward uh, with further recommendations as the working group, we can certainly call another rules committee meeting and uh, make revisions to the policy. But since everyone agree, well, at least the consensus I'm hearing is the policy in front of us as recommended by the working group is a significant improvement over our current policy. I do not think it would be in our best interest to wait on adopting what's in front of us today. Mr. Chairman. Senator Marty. Thank you. Um, this strikes me as let's pass the bill now and, and then we can come back next year and fix the bill further, even though we're in the middle of the negotiations and the debate over the bill. Why don't we, if we're going to come back in a month anyway, why don't we just leave the package where it is, send it back to them and ask them to take another look and explain why they feel so strongly that we should go against the recommendations? Senator Marty, the reason I don't support that is for the reasons I just mentioned. What we have in front of us is an improvement over our current Senate policy. There's been a lot of hard work and effort that's went into this. The hearing process is part of our current policy. So we're not changing the hearing process, except improving it based on what I've read. But I don't want to wait. This is just my perspective. I don't feel comfortable waiting any longer when we have the opportunity to adopt it today. With that said, the working group can continue to meet. And if there are further improvements that they would like to bring forward to the Rules Committee, I am making a commitment that we will call a rules committee if those um, if there's consensus in the working group to bring forward additional recommendations. Mr. Chairman. Senator Marty. Then are you proposing, if this amendment fails, are you proposing we're going to go through all the other little amendments here too that, that I saw a list of them that Maureen sent out? Or are we going to deal with each of them so we can, since we're sort of taking bits and pieces of of an unfinished report, I, I just, I mean, I would like, I would move to send it back to the work group before we do all this other thing. Again, I don't know if that's a higher motion or not, but I would make that, I make the motion that we send it back, um, the motion that Senator Lopez Franzen had said she was going to offer at some point. To me, we are tinkering in this without spending the time, without relying on people who acknowledge, some of whom say they are frustrated they didn't have the tools, they didn't have the ability, they didn't have anything else. So I'd like to move we send it back to them and ask them to finish the job. Well, I Again, Senator Marty, I, I agree with you, but for the, I, the opposite reason, I, I agree with your arguments. I don't think we should take amendment by amendment and try to take this bits and pieces. I think we should take the recommendations in their entirety as brought forward by the working group and then ask the working group to go back and continue to work. And if they have additional recommendations that they find consensus on, 
then they should bring those forward. And uh, you have my commitment that I will uh, call another rules committee meeting uh, as soon as practical after we get those recommendations. Now, it's up to the authors of those amendments if they want to if they want to propose them today. But um, I would again recommend that we adopt the recommendations in their entirety today and give the working group 30 more days to continue their work. And if they bring forward a different, uh, additional recommendations, uh, then we would consider those as a, a rules committee hearing. Mr. Right, Chairman, now, point of order. right now we have the A1 amendment in front of us. Mr. Chairman, point of order. Uh, Senator Osmond. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Point of order. So the question before the body is the A1 amendment. If Senator Lopez Franzen wishes to return this back to the committee, it, would it not be correct that the that Senator Lopez Franzen should remove her motion for the A1 and move then to refer this back to the committee? Is that not the proper procedure? Uh, well, I believe she has another resolution that would extend the deadline, but you are correct that the A1 is in front of us and that's what we're going to take a roll call. Vote. Mr. Chairman. Senator Marty. That was my question for Senate Council. Which is the higher motion? The motion to send it back, the CR 007 resolution, or this amendment? Which is the higher motion? Because I'm moving the CR 007 if it's a higher motion. Uh, Mr. Bowder. So, Mr. Chairman, I think uh, the analogy in terms of precedence of motions would be that the motion to return it to the working group for further um discussion and recommendations by the working group would be something like a motion to refer um and in looking at rule 28 and the senate rules which are generally applicable to committee hearings that takes precedence over a motion to amend okay so senator Mardi, are you making the motion are you making that motion yes mr chairman okay senator rest to that motion you're on mute senator rest there you go. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. I um, I think I will support that motion, but I, I also want to point out that there are no points of order in a committee. Um, the um, um, But it, it seems to me that um, um, I'm prepared to vote for Senator Melissa Lopez Franzen's motion. I do think, however, uh, I think it um, becoming clearer that the um, report um, would be adopted, even though there are those of us that would object to it with regard to the uh, hearing process. I would be, um, but I, but um, Mr. Chairman, I hear kind of different language coming from you. Um, some of it's very strong, saying uh, we adopt the report, but we charge we would you know, have a, um, uh, the amendment or not, the motion to adopt the report includes the charge for the work group to uh, consider within the next 30 days or so, or however long it is, um, the, um, that particular recommendation that's inside that, so that they have to look, go back and look at it. And if they have different a different recommendation that they report it back to the rules committee you call a rules committee if they've reached consensus then then there's uh, nothing uh, further to do if they haven't then we can take it up then on that one thing but but i'm uncomfortable with your position if it is well if they want to talk about it they can but we already have this process we are and i i don't think that's what you were saying and um, you know, I can support Senator, um, well, I can support Senator Marty's motion, but more importantly, I can support Senator Lopez Franzen's motion, um, but also just to indicate dissent. Um, but I also could see how it's important because there are so many improvements in the policy that we may uh, want to adopt it provided that we instruct the, um, the work group to continue meeting, particularly on that one issue of the, the, um, uh, of the hearing process. And I don't think that's being um, unreasonable on the part of those that have 
uh, those of us that have a, a concerns about the hearing process. Uh, we can adopt the report, but with the instruction to the um, work group to continue meeting on that one item and uh, and report back to the rules committee. I think that would be an accommodation and a compromise that um, uh, that um, I certainly uh, would um, consider very carefully supporting. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Senator Rest, um, you said what I was trying to say. You just did it with much more clarity than what I was able to uh, mention. But yes, that would be what I would like to see us do: is adopt the report and then. Uh, have the working group work for an additional 30 days, not just on the hearing process, but uh, if there are any other outstanding issues, um, they can continue to work on it. And if they do find consensus that they report back to the rules committee and um, the way we would do that is, uh, I don't know if we would include that in the motion or not. We can ask Mr. Bodern if, if there's a way to do that, but I'm happy to include it in the motion if, um, if that's where folks would like to get included. But right now we have the A1 amendment in front of us. Could we hear from Could we hear from Mr. Bottern about whether we could put that uh, directive to the work group um, as in the same motion as we adopted? I'd like Mr. to hear Bottern. his opinion. Mr. 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 Chairman, I certainly think it would be possible um, just to take both motions as one motion, um, provided no member wants to divide the motion. That's certainly something the committee could do. Um, I would say you may wanna clarify on line 1.6 of the, the CR7 resolution. It refers to the final recommendations of the working group. I suppose those are final. You could think of terminology like any additional, something like that, just to clarify it. But um, I think if you wanna take both motions together, the, the committee can certainly do that. Well, that is the, the motion that I would intend to make uh, or have someone make once we get to that point. But right now we have the Marty motion in front of us. But before we vote on that, we have Senator Lopez Franzen with her hand up. Um, thank you. I don't know if you can hear me. I'm in transit, but I uh, that was the entire intent of me trying to pose to the committee right in, in, from the outset of sending that provision back. So I, I am fine with doing that in a better worded amendment and with the help of, of Senate Council and withdraw my, my motion to strike the language of section 11 and just send the committee back to work on that piece. Okay, okay. Uh, Senator Marty. Um, Mr. Chairman, after that, I'm not sure where we stand, this was to send the full report, the full project back to the work group. Yep, and, that's your um, motion. Right. And and I can live with just sending the paragraph L back to the work group, but I, I think that's a weird thing to do to say we're going to send one portion back and the rest of it we're going to adopt or not adopt. I, I don't know. I mean, if we're sending that portion back to them, are we adopting it with uh, the friends in earlier motion, the A1 amendment, or are we adopting it without the A1 amendment? It seems to me neither of those, we should adopt everything but the, if we're adopting everything but that one section, then we should take out that section L so we can truly turn it back to them and say, now work on that portion. Well, perhaps um, I wasn't as clear, Senator Rest, I, maybe I made a mistake. My, my motion is gonna be to adopt all of the recommendations as brought forward by the working group and then instruct the working group to work an additional 30 days to find any additional revisions or consensus on the overall policy. So I, I don't have the exact terminology in front of me. I'm going to have Mr. Bodern uh, uh, state the motion when that time comes, but that would be my intent. So that is different than what you just mentioned, Senator Marty. Okay. Well, then I'm going to I'm going to ask that we send the entire thing back to the task force. And again, my intent was I'm just dealing with the amendment that was prepared, but my intent would be to give the working group access to the consultant and access confidentially to the report, because I believe they need the ability to do that. I think that's important to deal with. 
And um, that's the point of this. Um, I, I don't know why we would, I mean, to me, saying the way, Mr. Chairman, the way you suggested, well, we'll send it back to them. And if they can reach consensus, there may not be consensus on that. And so basically then we are adopting a report that's gonna continue something that the consultant strongly advised against. And to me, that's not a good way to adopt a report because the Senate apparently a couple of years ago revised this policy and it didn't serve the purpose. It didn't work right. And I think if we do an unclear continuation of it, we're in the same boat we were in two years ago and we just kicked the can down the road. So I, I suggest we just send the whole thing back to them and ask them to do it and give them access they need to the report and to the consultant. Okay, members, if you could uh, put your video on and unmute yourself, we have the Marty motion in front of us to uh, send the recommendations back to the working group. I'm going to give everyone a minute to come on if you're part of the committee. Okay, on the Marty motion, all those in favor, say aye. <laughs> And raise your hand or put your thumbs up. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed, say no. 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 The motion is not adopted. Okay. Mr. Bodden. I am going to ask you what, what my intent is for a motion would be to adopt the recommendations put forward by the working group in their entirety, and then instruct the working group to work an additional 30 days. And if uh, further recommendations are agreed to by the working group that they bring those forward to the rules committee. So how can you say that in, uh, with more clarity? Mr. Chairman, I think you've said it well. Um, yeah. I mean, the, the key thing, just to repeat, there are two components to the motion. One, to adopt the recommendations of the working group. And then, um, as you've stated it, further direct the working group to continue uh, the review of the policy and to report back to the rules committee with any other recommendations by August 15th, 2022. Mr. Chairman, can I divide the motion? Uh, you can divide the motion. Uh, yes, because it's yes. Thank you. Um, so first of all, I need someone to make the motion. Who would be comfortable making that motion? Senator Ress? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I would. Uh, I could make that motion. Um, you would need to when the motion when the uh, with the John with the Senator Marty uh, request. You will have to decide on which part of the motion is voted on first, and I would request roll calls on both. Okay, so are you are you making the motion as I mentioned? Oh, well, yes, okay. Others? Okay. I would make the motion, and then I um, would respect uh, Senator Marty's request that the motion be divided. Okay, and we will take- And it would be then, if that if that's his motion, then I would ask that the motion, that the part of the motion that would send the report and or that would instruct the members of the work group to continue working, uh, that it be voted on first. Okay. So uh, Senator Rest has a motion on the table. Senator Marty has asked for that motion to be divided, and we will take the portion of the motion that sends the report back to the working group and gives them uh, until August 15th to report back to the rules committee. We'll take that portion first. Mr. Chairman. Senator Marty. Not to confuse things, but could I, I'd like to amend that portion of the motion to require that the members of the working group have access to the report and to the discussing the report with the consultant. Okay, so that'll be included in the divided motion. In the part Senator that we're Rest. gonna vote on first. Yep. Mr. Senator, Chair. Mr. Bod, uh, hold on, Senator Kiffmeyer. Mr. Bodden. 
So, Mr. Chairman, Senator Marty has proposed an amendment to the portion of Senator Rest's amendment that he divided. I think Senator Rest could incorporate that amendment within her amendment. Otherwise, it's his amendment to her amendment needs to be no. voted on by the committee. Mr. Chairman, I would incorporate um, Senator Marty's uh, request uh, regarding uh, consulting with the um, um, the person that whatever that language was consulting um, that they be uh, provided access to the consultant uh, with regard to the uh, report that was made. Um, and my uh, my motion, Mr. Bodern, is not an amendment. My motion is a plain motion <laughs> that Senator Marty has um, uh, provided an amendment to that is, now, that is now is divided. Now that is now divided, and okay. he requests, and I decided to vote on the one part of the. Um, uh, uh, well, let's say. He has requested that my motion be divided, and um, and so um, I can decide whether we vote on the uh, my original motion first or on his amendment. And I am saying, since he's divided it, that uh, we vote on his amendment first with a roll call, and then following that. Um, if um, uh, if his amendment prevails, then we have the full report with his amendment on it before us. If his amendment does not prevail, then we have the full report in front of us with the proviso that Senator Miller um, uh, has as part of his move is part of his suggestion, which is now my motion, to um, instruct the, the work group to continue to work. This is a little bit different than what my recommendation was, so I might have a different motion. Okay. <laughs> but for well, now, I I would oppose the the Marty motion, uh, the division of uh, the rest motion, and a, a roll call has been requested. So Miss Baki will uh, will take the roll. Can I ask what we're voting on precisely? Could somebody give me the closest attempt at wording it? Maybe Senate Council. <laughs> Mr. Bowden. Mr. Chairman, so this is Senator Marty's amendment to the portion of Senator Ress motion that she has placed before the committee. This amendment would instruct the Secretary of the Senate to make the report uh, requested and obtained by the Senate in 2021 available to members of the working group and to make the consultant available to members of the working group. That's the sole content of this particular uh, amendment. Okay, Mr. Ms. Baki, please take the roll. All right, Senator Miller. No. Senator Johnson. No. Senator Lopez Franzen. Senator Lopez Franzen. Senator Bach. No. Senator Frentz. Yes. Senator Limmer. No. Senator Marty. Yes. Senator Newman. No. Senator Osmick. No. Senator Rest. Yes. Senator Weber. No. Senator Lopez Franzen. Yes. Okay. The roll is closed and I will um, text Senator Miller.
On a vote of four ayes and seven noes, uh, the motion does not prevail. So, Mr. Chair, where are we at with your? I think I think that means that we have the motion that you suggested, which I'm offering, that adopts the report with the proviso that the work group continue working for another 30 days um, with regard to the recommendations um, and report back to the rules committee um, with um, additional suggestions or, or um, um, you know. Here, here's the You know what I mean? Yeah, I here's think the that's recommended what you want. motion that I have. Okay. This would this would uh, line up with what my intent would be. Okay. Uh, it would be that in this case, Senator Ress or whoever yep. I'll do would it. Like to move, would move, get it right. Would move the approval of the Minnesota Senate non-discrimination and anti-harassment policy, dated June 29th, 2022 and further direct the uh, non-discrimination and anti-harassment working group to continue their work and report back to this committee with any further recommendations by August 15th, 2022. That's my motion. And Mr. Chair, isn't that the motion I divided earlier that tried to divide? And we, we voted- Yes, and then you tried to amend- We voted the part, we voted you voted that part down. down the Excuse me, I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman, my understanding was you voted down the amendment to the second portion of that, namely okay. that we send it, that we give them access to the report and the consultant. So do you want, to, do you want another vote on dividing, sending it back and adopting the policy? I'd like to send it back separately from adopting the policy. You can choose which one you want to vote on first. Mr. Right. But Chairman, we, already we have vote already on voted on that. We've already voted on that, Senator Marty. That was your first motion. Can we turn to Mr. Bodern? Because I'm unclear, because I was told that my motion was to amend your second half of that amendment to say that the group, when it goes back and it meets, that they have access to the consultant and to the report. That's what correct. I was told the last vote was on. That's correct. But prior to voting yeah. on that, you made a motion to send it back. And it failed. And it failed. Mr. Bodden. So, Mr. Chairman, tracking what happened most recently, it's true that certainly earlier Senator Marty made a motion to return it that failed. Most recently, Senator Marty requested a division of Senator Rest's motion. You granted the request for that division, and Senator Rest elected to proceed with the second half of her motion with respect to returning to permitting the, the working group to continue its work. Senator Marty then moved to amend that portion of her motion uh, with further instructions. That particular vote failed. And now what you have before you, because Senator Marty has divided it, is the second portion of Senator Rest's motion, which provides instructions to the working group to come back with additional recommendations in 30 days. That's what's before the committee at the Under, present time. Understood, but we, okay. So we had already voted on sending it back to the committee. That failed. So now we're going to vote on sending it back to the committee, but for, um, for additional to, recommendations. Uh, to work. And Mr. Chairman, I would hope that everyone would, um, um, would support that part, um, that proviso that you um, um, suggested as, as a, a part of your um, of your suggested motion, that um, it looks like I'm obviously offering on your behalf because as chair of the committee, it is inappropriate for you to be offering any motions. Correct. Just trying but, to get the process correct here. But That's Senator Ress, right. what what Senator Marty is trying to do is different than what you just said. He wants to send it back without adopting. I understand. The report. That. Yep. Okay. So now we'll take a vote on just the portion. What we're voting on now is basically directing the working group to continue their work and report back to this committee with any recommendations by August 15th, 2022, without actually approving the updated uh, policy dated June 29th, 2022. So that's what's in front of us now. Senator Lopez Franzen.
She's muted. Is that a, a Marty motion or a, a arrest motion? I'm completely trying to follow through all the bigger rules here. Yeah, we're basically voting again to send it back to committee, but this time with a little bit more clarity that the working group uh, should bring forward recommendations by August 15th, 2022. So it's a little bit in a, it's it's there's a little bit more detail than what the Marty motion was about 10 or 15 minutes ago, but it is a divided motion. Okay, and this is your motion or Senator Rest? Mine, Senator Rest. Okay, okay. But so it, it's Senator Marty dividing Senator Rest's motion. So it's just half of Senator Rest's motion that was made based on my recommendation. And I chose to have it okay. voted on first, which is what we're okay. doing. So, I, I mean, as I understand it, this is where we, we first started to discuss, you know, continuing this work and giving a few more weeks to do that. So I think it's a good compromise. Um, there has been really good work and there's still some better work that could happen with more time. So I, I support this um, compromise and I hope members do as well. Mr. Chairman, Senator Weber here. Senator Weber. Question, if we vote to do that, can are we still allowed to adopt all portions of the uh, recommend? Yes. Okay. Yep. Just so my understanding sure. is we'll, we'll have two votes now one on the second half of the amendment and then on the first half of the amendment and then the amendment in its entirety is that right mr no, and the, pro the proposal we there are two votes coming one is on the division of the proposal which is my motion um if that is defeated and we have the full motion then we have the first part of it and we vote on that and then, because that's how he divided it, and then if that prevails, then we have the full motion in front of us, which can, which is the motion to adopt in, and also including the proviso of sending it back. And that's what I'm going to support. Mr. Bodern, uh, comment, and then just let us know if, if we wanna support the Senator Rest motion in its entirety, how do we do that? <laughs> Mr. Chairman, at this point, um, what you really have is two motions that are combined in one motion. Senator Marty then, and, and he made a request for a division, which you granted because it's a divisible motion. So now there are two separate votes necessary to adopt the motion in its entirety. First, on the portion that Senator Rest elected to proceed with first, and second, on the other portion of her motion. Once you've done that, you will have adopted it in its entirety. Okay, so if, if both prevail, then we're then it's adopted in its entirety. That's correct. Right. So I would encourage a yes vote. Is there any further discussion? Okay, on the second half of the rest motion, all those in favor. <laughs> all those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, aye. say no. Motion prevails. Okay, now we're on the first half of the rest motion, uh, which would say Senator Rest moves the approval of the Minnesota Senate non-discrimination and anti-harassment policy dated June 29th, 2022. Mr. Those, Mr. 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 Chairman, Senator I had Rest. I had requested a roll call. Okay, uh, Ms. Senator Marty, anything further? Uh, Ms. Bach, you will take the roll. Senator Miller. Yes. Senator Johnson. Yes. Senator Lopez Franson. Yes. Senator Bach. Yes. Senator Frentz. Yes. Senator Limmer. Yes. Senator Marty. Yes. Senator Newman. Yes. Senator Osmick. Yes. Senator Rest. Yes. And Senator Weber. Yes. Well, it's a unanimous vote. Uh, one, two, three, four. Ms. Baki is 11 yeses, zero noes, correct? Yeah, you're correct, Senator. Okay. On a vote of 11 ayes and zero noes, uh, the motion prevails and it's adopted. 
Okay. So, Mr. Bodern, do we have to do anything further, or is is everything adopted? <laughs> Mr. Chairman, you've completed the work on the motion that was originally divided, and at this point, the the committee has adopted the recommendations and directed the working group to provide any further recommendations by August fifteenth. Okay. Is there any further discussion, Mr. Chairman? Uh, Senator Marty. And I, I apologize. I thought we were voting on the first half. I did not want to adopt the full report as it's been done so far, but I'll just state that objection because I thought we were still on the first portion, but I guess we didn't have a roll call on that. So um, anyway, my I intended to vote against that because I think it's half-baked thing to be adopting a report that goes against the recommendations of the consultant without even talking to the consultant. So I, I protest that and I apologize for voting wrong, but I was confused by which portion we were dealing with because I recognized we had divided it in half and I we didn't have roll call in the first half. So I uh, just I'm disappointed in this. I hope the work group can come back on that, but um, we're tying their hands again saying they don't get a look at the report. They don't get to deal with anything else. And um, anyhow, that's my disappointment. Mr. Bodder. Mr. Chairman, I think you you may have some language before you, but an additional motion to provide staff with direction to make the necessary technical conforming changes to the policy would be helpful as well. I do. Yep. I was going to close with that. Um, so members, I'd like to... I would make that motion, Mr. Chairman. Okay. So uh, Senator Ress makes the motion to instruct Senate nonpartisan staff to make any technical corrections to the Senate's non-discrimination and anti-harassment policy and process dated June 29th. 2022 and have it posted to the Minnesota Senate's website. Um, on that rest motion, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed aye. say no. Aye. Motion prevails. Uh, members, that uh, concludes the business, but before we go, I just want to repeat my comments from earlier and thank uh, all of the members and the staff and everyone who's been involved in uh, working on updating uh, this policy. It's been very, very important work. There's been a lot of time and effort uh, put into this, and um, it looks like there will be some additional time and effort. So I just want to take a moment to say thank you for all of your work and everything that you're doing to uh, help make the Minnesota Senate an even a safer place to, to work. Are there any further comments? Seeing none, uh, the committee is adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Have a great afternoon.